And if you have a phone, a tablet, your mind can drift with so many senses from these tablets. Even the monks or meditators, it's uncomparable with the past pastimes, the minds and the weather. Yeah, the present weather is not so okay like before. Weather changes because of physical developments. And then the food. So now the foods are not so natural, not no natural in ingredients like before. It's, it's prevent, uh, it's an invented ones already. So this, the supporting, the, the causes are not strong enough like before. That's why age are lower. So in the future, the science will not stay like now. It will develop more and more and more. And people's morality can become slower and lower and shorter life. And according to Buddha's teaching, the life will be lower up to 10 years age, 10 years lifespan, maximum 10, okay. it will reach to that time. Then, then it will not lower than 10, it will increase again. People live longer life again, up to uh, like that's 80,000, 100,000, 1, like trillions, year, billion years, years, that time will reach again. And this a pair of decreasing and increasing a pair of time is one andraka. The time, the name of the time is called one andraka. And uh, 64 pairs of andraka is called one atenchiyaka and four pairs of atenchiyaka is called one wall, one kapa. And in, in Bali it's called kapa, one wall. So wall's time is that much long. So, uh, so at the present life we born as a humans. And where we were started from, whether we start we had the past life or we suddenly appear uh, at one time or whether we had past life. We need to think about it. Uh, we believe, I believe, I had past lives. I believe. And in this life we have to die. I have to die. I have to die at one time. and. After dying, is it the end? Everything's stopped or not? No, not yet. We have to, we have to born again. If we are not getting nibbana, if someone get nibbana, yeah, no more born. Boda, the Buddha's name is Gaudama's Boda. To become a Buddha, he had to fill up the perfections for hundred thousand walls, so many lives, so many lives, born and die, and born and die, and he purposely fill up these perfections to become a Buddha. So when he was filling up his perfections at that times, where were we? We were in a life, we were in, in many lives. And uh, so, let me remind you again uh, uh, be natural in <laughs> this, and you're joining this retreat. According to the last Buddha, he said, before I become a Buddha, there were, there were many Buddhas before me. Uh, more than the number of sands in the river banks of Kangas, Kangas river banks, the number of sands, 
too many numbers of Buddhas already arise and passed away. So, in one world is that much long, and in one world, maximum five Buddhas, only five Buddhas is just maximum number of Buddhas arise and passed away. Some of the world, the whole world, only one Buddha arise and passed away. So it's so rare, it's so rare to 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 uh, listen to the teachings, to to get a chance to to born as humans at the time when both the teachings are not disappear yet, and that is such a such a blessed, such a fortunate chance. So yeah. Where were we when that kind of, that, that number of sense, more than number of sense Buddhas, that Buddhas, at that times, where were we? We were in, we were rotating in the some sort of life, 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 life. Too many lives. Extremely long. So, uh, according to Buddha, the last Buddha, he said, uh, in that samsara, we born as good, good creatures, bad creatures, if we compare. The number of bad creatures' life is so much more than number of good creatures' life. It is like a number of sands on the nails of your thumb and the, num- the, the amount of art, like that kind of comparison. So we were in, mostly we were, we were rotating in the samsara as, as the bad lives. So if you cannot believe in samsara, yeah, it's up to you. You will never scare to rotate again in that samsara and uh, suggest like, okay, there's only one life. Uh, if Time is the end, so just enjoy as much as you can. It will be up to you. <laughs> but I really believe in samsara now. Now. When I was born, I didn't believe in samsara. Did you believe it before you became a monk? Or? Especially uh, after I become a monk. Especially when I'm stuck teaching to people. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not believing in that. And, and I, I don't like blind faith. I don't want to accept something easily. Only that can make my mind very clear. That can give me very clear understanding. Then only I want to accept. Uh, now I really can accept. How are you sure about this? Really? How are you sure about this? Uh, I'm not sure if there is a Yeah. yeah uh, there are many proofs, like there were past lives, like reincarnation stories. There are many proofs. Some of the, how do you call it, observers, they, they specialize in that. They observe. Uh, they make a thesis about this. Uh, when they hear a boy is talking about his past life, they go to that place and they check everything and they found proof. And many, 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 many stories. So, uh, let me share you one of them. About a one of a person. Uh, he was born in U.S. in 1877. His name is Edgar Casey. Uh, so he was born as a very religious Catholic person, uh, a farmer's son in a village. Uh, they, they are just a farmer only, not highly educated one. And when he was born, he, his family is very religious, so he was always mostly reading the Bibles, 
he wanted to become the priest. And when he becomes 20 years old, he lost his voice. The voice is no more come out. So he had to rest at home and then he tried to get treatments from many doctors, but it, it was not recovered. Uh, but one time, one of the uh, entertainment groups arriving to their towns, and the group leader can, can give treatments to the people with hypnosis. Hypnosis, uh, make some, make the patients fall asleep and give treatments. So, he make Edgar Casey fall asleep and he talk something to Edgar Casey and he replied. When in a fall asleep state, he replied and the voice come out. If he is falling asleep, the voice come out. <coughs> uh, he is not fully recovered yet. And uh, that entertainment group leader, he has to go to other town for entertainment. So he leave in a halfway and he left. Uh, and in their towns, uh, one of the persons, his name is Linma, I think Linma. Linma was studying about hypnosis and he was uh, coming and studying when that, that man is treat, giving treatments to Edgar Casey. So when that man left, he wanted to test. He wanted to test his hypnosis uh, quality. Then he started testing to Edgar Casey. And Edgar Casey was replying in a sleeping state. Uh, and he asked to him, why it's happened to you? Why you are able to talk while you are falling asleep? And when, why you, uh, when you wake up, you, the voice is no more come up. Then he replied in fall asleep state. When he is fall asleep, the mind is very relaxed and calm. And the, uh, the, the voice system, the muscles, uh, no tensions. That's why the voice come out. But when he wake up, the mind has tension, so the muscle has tension. So you need to practice some exercise to relax your muscles. You need to avoid some what kind of food. You need to eat what kind of food. What what kind of exercise? He himself. He himself talked about the treatments and then Lima make Edgar Casey wake, wake up and he gave that instructions to him. Then he is recovering, his voice come out. Then uh, Lima was interesting about it and he has stomach pain. He has stomach pain so maybe uh, because his, his reply when he falls asleep, the way he talks is really like a professional doctor. The thumbs are really like a professional doctor's thumbs, medical thumbs. And so he make him fall asleep again and then he asks, he has the stomach pain, how, how he can do it, and he gives instructions. Uh, he's like, the way he reply is like, uh, now I am seeing uh, like like reading a uh, uh, like a uh, X-ray or something like scan like that. Uh, according to this, uh, what place got something wrong, and you need to change what that kind of instructions. And he recovered from stomach pain, <laughs> so he, they are start interesting about it, and they are start testing about it and then uh, they could give many treatments. Uh, many many patients become recovered and they both were very happy because Edgar Casey was a very religious person so with this way he was able to help, help the gods. Uh, caring, sharing, helping to others is very good. He never Everything is free treatments. Never, never take money. And uh, many, many cases, they, they, they give treatments. And later on, like 
U.S. is so big and the patient is at very far place and they are start testing. Like make Edgar Casey fall asleep. Okay, uh, a person saying this, living in what place, is having this kind of disease and please give me the instructions to give treatments to him and he start saying now I am seeing the patients and according to uh, like like body scans uh, what is wrong you need to exercise with weight you need to avoid what what kind of food what you must take what kind of herbal herbals and they recover uh, there are many cases I think around 20,000 patients, I think, he gave treatments. So all are recorded. So, because someone must ask, he must answer. So they must, to remember, they must record. Later on, they have a secretary, and the secretary must record. So these records you still can find till now in U.S. And in some cases, one of a one of a girl is mentally unstable, crazy, and they are trying to find the treatments, but they, they can't make it. So the brothers bring the girls to Edgar Casey. They Edgar Casey become quite famous, more and more famous. If his uh, people wrote about him in the newspapers, and he start becomes famous. So they bring the girl to Edgar Casey and he fall asleep. And then he said, the last two in that girl is, the last two is pressing the nerves connected to the brain. So you must take all the last two. That's his instructions. Then, uh, then the brothers bring the girls to the dentist and they check and then the dentist said, that's, that's possible. And they took out that tooth and the car, the girls becomes normal, back to normal. That kind of cases. And in the later on treatments, he is start saying about lives. Edgar Gates, he starts saying about lives. Uh, one of a professor coming for the treatments, he is blind. The eyes cannot see nicely. Uh, so he said, okay, uh, he, this, this one is, cannot be fully recover, he said. Because he was, that professor was a, a tribal group leader. The, the wild people, last time he was a wild people. And when they catch an enemy, he, he took the responsibilities to strike through the eye with the sharp bamboo that's to the enemies and that's that is the cause and he said many 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 like during his life right yeah he put the bamboo in the eyes of his enemies yeah. and be born yeah. that's blind person yeah yeah and uh, another person is like sick, I always get sick and uh, mostly he is getting low blood pressure the pressure is down um, and bring to Edgar Casey and he said oh, he was born in Greece he was born in Greece before and he was he liked to enjoy the shows like the fighting between the, the gladiators and the tigers and the alliance so when somebody get hurt, when the bloods come out, they are so happy, they are cheering, enjoying that. If someone is really suffering and you are really happy. And that's that's a fact he's getting that low blood pressure. He he's not doing by himself. But the mind mental is very important, that's why. This morning we were speaking about not having a self, we cannot define a self. 
But you now we say that we have several lives and we can be in a several life, but this self we be in several lives. So finally we can find a self. Okay, 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 yeah, now I know why you are confusing. It's, it's a bit confusing. So let me try to clear your confusion. <laughs> uh, that kind of confuse was arising in a person's mind before. And that person, the king, a king, he asked to a monk. That monk was enlightened. So their questions and answer was very famous. Uh, like after Gautama Buddha passed away, 500 years later, these two, two persons make questions and answer, and their questions and answer make the Buddha's teachings to bright again. Uh, so, the king is such a wise person. Uh, he, he, he knows so much, and he likes to ask. He is not happy with his life, because he cannot discuss with somebody uh, and uh, if when you discuss something that is not clear for him, and the other person cannot give answer, clear answer to him. So he was complaining that uh, people are declaring themselves as wise person, but in actual wise person are so rare to find that kind. So wise persons cannot declare themselves as wise. They are not there to stay in their country. They run away from the country. And at the final, he met that monk, uh, Nagasena, the, the monk's name, Nagasena. And uh, he asked to him, so, venerable sir, so let me know that past life creature and the present life creature whether these two creatures are the same or not. And the monk said, no, it's not the same. Then, the past life creature and the present life creature, whether they are the different one, different one or not, no, they are not the difference. Not the same, not the difference. And why, like, the past life creatures did something bad, and why this affect, this, this bad karma is affecting to the present creature? And you said we are not the same. Why it's affect? Please give me some example, an uh, example and tell me. And if, okay, I'll give you the example. Okay. Let's say somebody steal a mango from a mango tree. It's not belong. He, he's not belonging that tree. Steal a mango from that tree. And the owner of that mango tree catch him and bring that thief to you, the king. You are the authorized person. But the person who took the mango said, I didn't bring the seed he grow. Uh, the seed, he grow the seed. So I take the different one. I didn't take the seeds, his mango seed. I take the different one. So I have, I'm not stealing, I'm taking the different one, not his one. So if he say like that, will you give punishment to him or not? And the king said, no, I have to punish. Why? It's not the same. Whether the mango and the mango seed the same or not. No, it's not the same, but it is not a different as well. That's why it's not free from the cause. This is a cause and this is the effect, cause and effect. So the karma is, the, the theory is that mm. uh, cause, yeah, cause and effect. So the, these karmas like to follow. Is it a personal thing, the karma, or is it impersonal? Cause and effect is impersonal. Uh, I mean, if you... If everything changes, mind, everything disappears and then appears again, there are these elements and other things that cause the karma because I'm not the same anymore. It's not the same, but it's not a difference. Yeah. It's not a different. There's a kind of lineage. Yeah, link. Yeah, link. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So this, the concept of soul is like, maybe like a soul is permanently existing, maybe. Uh, I, I am not so much familiar with that soul idea. Uh, what I understand about soul is like, uh, maybe like you have a soul, and after you die, that soul come out, and then enter into the other body, uh, like that. And we we have no idea like that. The Cause and effect, yeah. The Christian they have one soul, a personal soul. Kind yeah. of. The Chinese they have five different souls according to the five elements. So if there the soul concepts is if if entering to other bodies, this is also you, this is also you. The same. Lives we knowingly or unknowingly we we did many good actions, bad actions. So good karmas, bad karmas. Everybody has good karmas, bad karmas. It's not little bit. It's too much. So as long as these karmas are affecting you, uh, you will be born like uh, maybe uh, you born as a Let's say like a bad life, uh, three dogs, three dogs, because of bad karma. But uh, because of good karma, people feed, treat these three dogs nicely. Some some of the three dogs get better chance than other three dogs. Karmas are different. So some people are getting priority wherever they go. That karma they have. It's not blindly getting. They they give priority, good seed. They offer good seeds to other uh, like pets. So if you are able to accept the karma, I mean, there is there is nothing unfair. Every, whatever happening is fair. And but we should not blame on the past karmas only. Like some things unfair is happening to you. You are being bully by somebody, you must prevent it. Do not blame like if I have bad karma, I have to be bullied, I have to be being bullied. But you must try to stop it. And you, although you try to stop, it still happens. You cannot prevent it. Then that's a karma. That's a karma. So karma is not only depending on the past, it depends on the present also. So do you think that sometimes, for the example of the, the bully, they deserve it? They were... Deserve? Deserve it because it has bad karma on the past life. Yeah. 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 Uh, but we must try to prevent as much as we can for bad to not happen. Because yes. you prevent the other person from committing bad karma by bullying you now. Yeah. So you stop like they will try to continue to bully you, but you you try to stop them so they don't they don't commit bad karma. The other person. Yeah. So I couldn't change karma past cause with my will or determination. As long as like karma are still affecting you will still rotating in the samsara, born and die, born and die. Because of good karma, you will born into a good life. But good life is also not free from suffering. Good life, so whatever life. So, so, so only when you are able to get out from that, that rotations, you will be free from suffering. So you must have willingness to rotating in the sun, stop, stop, stopping the rotating in the samsara. So, we, yeah, like, uh, we, we already had lives, like street dogs. Uh, their lives is uh, to eat something, they have to bite each other, fight each other. It's very aggressive and like in the ant's life, the fly's life, the rat's life, uh, 
we are trying to get a food. Right? We have been living in that, that life many times. So these kind of characters, these kind of creations are called sankara. These sankaras, because of sankara, uh, you are attached to vijnana. Vijnana means uh, you have characters, you, are, you have a person. So some of the characters are followed from the past because of some kara in the past. Uh, so if we are living our life like oh, so aggressive to eat, you are just just emphasizing your life to be to be able to eat nicely, and then after you die, because of that sankara, then vijnana. You will born again in this life. So, if I would have been a dog in my former life, I might have some attributes of a dog in my personality as a human. Yeah, 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 yeah. The personalities, yes. Could that scare you, my sister? You like scare me because you were a dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> that's very possible. I think that's that's very possible. I don't know. I cannot know my past life. I don't have that power. But someone else told you, right? Yeah. <coughs> About your past life? Yeah. yeah. Not only one life. If you if you just know one life, it's very interesting. But if, if you know all the life, it's boring. It's nothing. It's nothing. I mean, you, were a, you were a king. And people were very happy. Oh, I was a king. But nothing. It's nothing. <laughs> but if everything is determined by karma, where does the free will come in? Do you have the free will? But when you have, when you have the wisdom, like when you start seeing the the dukkha satya, the noble truth of suffering, no life is free from suffering. And then, uh, then, al- although, yeah, we already get light, so we have to go on. We have to go on. And you can go on your life without suffering in the mind. Free will. That's mm. You have a choice. Yeah. So, people are so scared, like, oh, if I get Nibbana, oh, I will never born. It's not easy. <laughs> Just by one practice, one life, and it's not easy. Don't worry, you will still born. So if you intend for nibbana, we will still born, but cannot be bad life. So don't scare for nibbana. <laughs> it's not a scary one. <laughs> so somehow we all have a good karma because we are here and we. Do. Here it is the teachings and how we actually can get out of something. You are already in really luck just before this video. Yeah. And then you're more lucky to hear And I want to share you one, <laughs> one, one. What uh, meaning are you going to be the university? I think they said in the story that being born as a human is the chance to throw a ring in the, in the ocean and the turtle comes out of the ring. Every day the years or something. Yeah. That's the chance as an animal to become a human. So if you become an animal, like uh, the wisdom, the wisdom is different. Human's wisdom and animal's wisdom is different. Uh, humans can understand this kind of teaching. Life is not free from suffering. You can know. Animals cannot understand. However, you explain. Yeah, we know we say animals suffer less because they don't have all this understanding no. and they don't have all this complex thing. When an animal maybe just living on an instinct or whatever, maybe it's more maybe happier at some point. No, animals also suffer. They like if when they are unable to stay as they lie, when they are unable to eat as they lie, they, they also suffer. And uh, uh, like if someone is born as animals, they have very low chance. Like from the present life, they cannot create good karmas. 
they have to depend on the past karmas, most of the past karmas only. But we only suffer from something that we know. Like, for the food programs and animals, they don't eat what they like, but do they know what it's like in terms of their, this concept of liking or... You haven't seen dog complaining about not having food. <laughs> Yes, but the difference is that the dog, you don't have much chance to not suffer but not having what you want. As, as a human, you can understand this process of Namarupa, body and mind, and not suffer about not having your wishes fulfilled. You can detach. One thing is that you can, by, by the Buddhist teachings, you can, you can attain Nirvana, understand this, detach from all this stuff, and basically, the big difference in Buddhism is that you don't have to go through all the karma you have behind you, you can realize the Nirvana and skip this process, that's the nice thing. But if, if you skip this, then still, as a human, you have the possibility to not suffer because of like, adding the second arrow, as it said in Buddhism. Like, something unpleasant is happening to you, the body may suffer, but you don't have to suffer in your mind by the suffering of the body. Yeah, but you don't necessarily have access to that knowledge. Like, I would rather be uh, a dog in a nice house in, uh, I don't know, French Riviera coast, <laughs> than to be a child in Syria in the middle of the war. Because this child is going to suffer, he's not going to know about all these bullies in the as well, you know. And this, uh, you just cannot decide by seeing one life. One life. Whatever life after born, you have to hold and you have to die. Definitely, it's, it's, it's very sure. It's confirmed, very <coughs> sure. So maybe a more a, like goat's dog's life, and when the time is right, you will die. And don't know what will be next, next life. Have to depend on the past karmas only. But, but being us as humans, you have a wisdom. You, you can change, you can change your karma. Humans can understand like there will be no perfections of physical physicality, no perfect place. There is, there will be no perfect place. If something is okay, something is not okay. Right? No, a perfect environment, no perfect health. You cannot say like I'm so healthy, I have perfect health. Uh, if you if you stay under the sun for uh, one hour continuous, you will you will sick, you will have headache, or if weather is too cold, you cannot just stay ten minutes, and you, you cannot say I'm very healthy. So our skin is so thin, and it can break any time. So uh, you you have a slip, uh, accident slip, and your the hardest. Particles inside your body, the bone can crack any time. It's like a uh, shell of a chicken egg. We have that kind of nature. And Buddha said, if someone say uh, he is very healthy and nothing bad can happen to you, happen to him, and we have to say like that's a fool's saying, a fool's saying. Unperfections and humans can understand it. Life has no perfections except, and then the mind has no suffering. Mind can free from suffering. So when you're an animal, you cannot, uh, you cannot affect your karma. Well, you cannot do good deeds. Huh? How can you do good deeds as a as you you can, can, but you can't do bad as well? You can do good deeds. If you're a dog, for example, if you're a dog, you and then you see a child drowning, you might instinctively, 
India jump into the water and see. But what is the chance, you know? Yeah. Most animals are just living on instinct, eat, eating, sleeping, yeah. repeating. So this why it is considered better to be a, a human because you can consciously act on your karma. Yeah. yeah. So I get up from the animals to the human. Just depending on the past karmas only. They, they had to be uh, like dogs. Also, they 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 create the sankaras. Like dogs will think dogs' way to eat is important. Uh, that creations and then because of sankara, they will be going there. Now. The next life depends <coughs> on that. But you could be a dog in the present life, and next life you could be a human. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah
So the Vasa realms, all are like enlightened Brahmas. Like Sota, Padam, Brahma, Sakata, Gama, Brahma, they are. They are. They are only meditating. No, if, if someone is getting this, this wisdom, they are understanding already. And then the, their life will be like higher and higher and higher. Then they will never go down to the lower realms. There's different levels of enlightenment. Four levels of enlightenment. So the first level, maximum seven life. Maximum. Remaining. Seven Remaining, seven. yeah. Okay. Then you will be definitely enlightened. Nibbana. You will get Nibbana. And maximum means that in the end that present life also he can enlighten. So within seven lives you will finish the remaining three stages, that's for sure. Within seven lives. Within seven lives, yeah. Within seven lives, yeah. Within yeah. yeah. seven lives. Yeah. You need to reach it first. Be the Mahabodha teach mind and mental factors. Fifty-two kinds of mental factors, uh, like deity mental factors, Vichikesa mental factors, that kind of fifty-two kinds. Good mental factors, bad mental factors, like loving kindness mental factors, compulsion mental factors, like anger mental factors, ignorance mental factors. So these mental factors come and attach to the mind, that mind becomes uh, like, it's called mind and mental factors combination is called Nama. It's called Nama. So the original nature of the mind is like a, a, a pure water, orderless, colorless, very clear one. Mental factors are like the coloring powders. So when the colored powders mix in the water, it becomes blue water, red water, yellow water, like that. So when good mental factors come and attach, it becomes good mind, compassionate mind, loving kindness mind, or jealous mind, or angry mind, or confusing mind, or that. So, uh, in, if someone is getting Sotapana wisdom, the deity mental factors and Viji Kesa mental factor will no more attach to that person. Deity means wrong understanding. And wrong understanding, the main wrong understanding, yeah, uh, self is existing. I, there is I existing. I. That idea. Uh, no more attach. He's not forgetting. There is no self. He never forget. There is no self. Uh, maybe after you listening some explanation from some teacher, yeah, there is no self inside this room. You you know you remember it. But when you get outside from this room, someone say bad about you. Oh, he say bad about me. I. So it's it's arise again, forgetting. And, and attachment on self. Three ways of attachment on self. They are called deity, dana, mana. Deity is understanding. Dana is craving, and mana is the pride, proudness. So, is Sotapana person only deity is no more attached. But the Na is self like, uh, is understanding there is no self. But he cannot stop the craving. I want to stay like this. You know, there, but he cannot stop yet. It's improper way to say, but cannot stop that craving yet. That craving can clear only when a person is enlightened. Craving is a kind of greed. 
Lopa. It is an omnivore, right? Yeah. The third stage. And the uh, pride. You still wrong. I am such a smart person. I know very well. And that is not not clear yet in sort of a person. The pride goes away in the fourth? The pride also clear only in, in the last stage. The last one. Yeah. But the pride is not like very proud. Uh, it's no, very smooth. Uh, smooth, smooth. Gentle pride. you are understanding. And the most important is mindfulness, not to forget that understanding. It's if someone is not getting that mega wisdom, it's, it will forget. You will forget. Mega wisdom. Mega is that permanent wisdom, that, that sort of Bana wisdom, Sakata Dharma wisdom. That. So when I was going and teaching in a village, a small village. There is only one monastery. And the airport is 80 years old. 60 persons. 60 years as a monk. And he stay alone in that monastery. Because nobody can stay close to him. Because he is very talkative. Very, very talkative person. And then uh, his monastery is such a big one. So, uh, last time I was going and teaching in Popa, the Bawa Center, and that village people come and try that retreat, and they invite, and they cannot come, it's quite far, so they want to make it in their village. So the monastery is their big one, so no choice, they, they, they go and talk to their airport, and they invite me. So of course, if when I go to that monastery, I have to go and bow, pay respect to the monk, and the uh, teaching is not starting yet, and he start talking, like, non-stop talking, and I'm listening, and what he is saying uh, true. Like, he is saying like he when he was young, he had that scriptural knowledge, he learned. Buddhism in scriptural things, many things he know, and he's now he is 60 verses already, and he said he meditate as well, and the vipassana wisdom he is getting, but mega wisdom he is not getting. He said, and uh, in the books he read, he he see like the wisdom. Uh, we personal wisdom is forgettable. It's forgettable. Mega wisdom is unforgettable. Right. So that is true, he said. He is not getting was mega wisdom, he admitted. Yeah, that's true. So mega wisdom, if you have mega wisdom, you have already a sort of Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So among all the good deeds, do that that mega good deeds is uncomparable the best. So you already had good deeds in many ways. So you should not be so urgent to, to be able to do these good deeds again and again. Uh, the good deeds you already have and to get the good deeds you never had. That can stop the samsara. This is the most important one. So you must try for it. So you could practice for many years but not reach the mega wisdom but you get the personal it's, wisdom? It's, it depends on the perfections. You're not uh, not blindly getting that mega wisdom. Like seriously meditating. Very, very serious. Trying so hard. And you have very determined whether I die or whether I get that mega wisdom. And if you are not perfect enough to get that mega wisdom, you may die. You will not get that mega. So it's not blindly getting one. So because you are perfect enough to get that wisdom. That's why you are getting the perfect enough means you have enough good deeds to get that wisdom. So if someone is just meditating, meditating, meditating and not not helping, not sharing, not doing good deeds, it's, it's, it's not the right practice. Uh, when you say that the wisdom, uh, the personal wisdom can be forgotten or something, uh, do you mean in this lifetime, uh, for example, mega wisdom, do you also take it into the next life? And this kind of we personal wisdom, although you forget, it can reappear, reappear. It's, it's really supporting for mega wisdom, like extending, extending the we personal wisdom and it can become mega wisdom. And mega wisdom the last one. It is something you carry over the life. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Sense. That was hard. Believe me. Now I feel motivated also. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so, during Buddha's time, uh, like, no, not, not during Buddha's times, uh, one time, five months, they discuss each other. We must, like, very determined. We are such a lazy people, so we must very determined. Uh, we must have a determination whether we die or whether we get this wisdom. So we must go somewhere and practice seriously and fight going on top of a mountain. Go up. It's very difficult for access, difficult accessible area. And after getting up there, we will never come down if we are not getting that wisdom. So they go there, and then they practice. Then uh, one person becomes enlightened. And he is not only enlightened, he gets that samatha powers as well, the mental power as well. He can go somewhere with his mind. I just think about there, and he can reach there that kind of power as well. So he offer rest of the four. Okay, I will go Armstrongs and I will feed you. So be meditate nicely. But the rest of the four deny it. Before we come in here we did not have that kind of negotiations, that that kind of agreements. We cannot accept it. So let us continue meditate. You just go wherever you want. And that person leave. And among four, one be one is getting anagama wisdom, the third, third stage. And not only anagama wisdom, he's getting that samatha powers as well, mental powers as well. So he also offer, but the rest of the three not accepted. And he died. The third one he died. 
die and he is born in that Brahma's years. The, the Soda was a Brahma's realms. And among these three, they are not getting any mega wisdom and they all die <coughs> on top of that mountain. Among these three, one born as a human in human realm. And his name becomes Bahuya. So Bahuya, he lives a life and only when he's old, he travels uh, by the ship crossing the sea. And because of the storm, ship wrecked and he was drifted in the sea and reaching to the island. And his clothes, clothing were drifted in the sea, so he was naked. So he was trying to cover his body with the floating woods and in the water, cover or tie with a rope, and he go up to the island. Then the people saw him, and they were thinking, Oh, this person has no grace, no defilements. Maybe he, he is an enlightened one. When they, they are paying respects to him, paying homage to him, donating things to him, and he was enjoying it. So he was pretending as an enlightened one. And then the, the Anagama Brahma is knowing that. So he know uh, his life is going to end very soon. He's going to die very soon. So he must come, go and remind him. So he, he come down. And they can they can pretend, they can, as humans, they can calm down, they can remind, they have that power. So they remind, Bahuya, why you are pretending as the enlightened one? Should not pretend, you are going to die very soon. And now Buddha is already arriving in the world and he is teaching to the people, you must go and listen Buddha's teaching. And because of that reminder, he go and see to the Buddha and he's asking Buddha to teach him on the street. That time Buddha is going for arms rounds, going for arms, and please teach me, please teach me. And Buddha said, this is an arms rounds time, this is not a teaching time, calm down your mind. And uh, I'm anjit, I'm going to die. Buddha know everything. Uh, so he teaches the shortest teaching to him. And he said, Okay, Bahuya, calm down. So when you see something, try to practice seeing only. When you hear something, try to practice hearing only. That's the teaching from Buddha. And when he hear that, he understand, his understanding open, 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 and he is enlightened on the street. Just by hearing these words, no, not this kind of meditation. So, he is not blindly enlightened. He is perfect enough to be enlightened because in the past lives, he he practiced until he died. So, like perfections are like uh, Buddha gave example. It's not blindly happened. <coughs> Someone is trying to chopping down a tree chopping, chopping to fall down the tree. Let's say you need 100 chops, then only the trees can fall down. Bahuya is like already chopped 99 times in the past. The karma is that, that much strong. So now is like the last chop. Just a watch from Buddha and he's enlightened. So, what we are doing, what we are meditating now, is like chopping. But we don't know how many chops already, how, how much perfect we are already. So meditation is not like urgently doing to, to happen this. You cannot do it. It's just to be chopping. And when the time is right, it will fall. Didn't the Buddha mention that you have to practice until your blood becomes solid or 
Nate, I never hear that. Is, the, is it your in, invention? I think you gave a sermon on the meditation on death to remind yourself that you can die anytime so you have to practice really hard. <laughs> Buddha teach many ways. Many ways. You know, uh, according to the characters of people, he gave different teachings. Different, different teachings. He know. He know. And one time... Uh, Sariputra was teaching to uh, a man, uh, like he, he is teaching like Asuba, Asuba meditations, unpleasant nature of uh, the physical, the real, real nature of physical, <coughs> unpleasant one. If you just peel off the skin and whatever you see will be ugly things, very awful awful things and uh, you see oh so such a beautiful girl but when you just imagine that that girl die after die it's rotten it's very ugly one that that is called asuba meditation asuba meditation yeah, that's that's a real uh, you just cover the ugly things with a very thin skin of it that's so, and if you if you really see that, then no attachment, attachment will be lesser and lesser. Like the greed can be lower down. So Sariputra was teaching to that person with that kind of teachings. But that person, his ex life, many lives, he lived life as a, a gold goldsmith. Uh, you know, yeah. Uh, so he, he likes the beauties. He likes the art. Like that kind of character is there. So he is not understanding, he is not getting, he is not enjoying that, that meditation. And then uh, Buddha come and Buddha change the way. So Buddha give a, a handkerchief, a white, white handkerchief. And then he asks him to uh, like, like rubbing that white one, and because the white one is so so pure, so he liked that he liked to look at that that white, <coughs> and he rub and look and rub and look, and it becomes like a darker brown, and it becomes like the old one. Then he start. So whatever beauty has is impermanent. So uh, it's really matched with his characters. Then he, he get the wisdom. So Buddha only the Buddha know uh, who has what characters, which way is the most suitable way. Like so that's why he teach many different ways. Effort leading persons. He will teach effort leading ways. Hmm. That's good because I don't like to practice until my legs are bleeding and you know hands are crawling all over me. <laughs> what if that's the way that you need to practice? Yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe I'm that type of person. I'm a little bit afraid of that. Actually, it's it's said uh, that. Uh, Jan Shah wrote this wisdom as well, to know the characters of people and giving them the proper meditation object so they go faster. And I can believe that because like, we have quite a lot of disciples that are said to be arahats now, now or they are dead like Ajahn no, Ma, well, of course, Ajahn Ma's disciple. But yeah, when you speak with Luang Po Anand said, yeah, I was really attached to the, the, the beauty of the body, not knowing about it. And Ajahn Chah gives him as the meditation of the skin. So what was Ajahn Anand doing as a young man for quite a few years? He was doing Asuba, peeling his skin in the meditation down all the time. See the 
body. And yeah, he's supposed to be our heart. And if you meet him, you can do it. Good. <laughs> when I was joining a retreat, the teachers asked us to try to see what whoever are the skeletons. Like the skeletons ones. Uh, yeah, just imagine with your mind. Try to see however beautiful just a skeleton. The man just a skeleton. The dog just a skeleton. And if you if you just imagining that, and you start really start seeing that, and no attachment, no difference. All are the skeletons. <laughs> And he and uh, like lying lying down meditation sessions, he was guiding that skeleton meditation and he was mentioning like how the the skull of the head is what form, it's hard, what shape, and like in nose area is is opening like he's mentioning the ribs are like in which form and we are lying down and we are thinking about that and we are stuck. Start seeing it. And some people, okay, uh, lying down meditation time is over, and some are, some cannot move. They, they are still, still like this. Like <laughs> really like skeleton. And they, they just open their eyes, and they cannot talk. And <laughs> they are begging, like, uh, please help me, I cannot move. But they cannot talk anything with the eye only. <laughs> it was long hour, two two hours. Uh, it was long hour for us at the beginning. It was very long, and don't allow us to move at all. So, <laughs> skeleton, skeleton. <laughs> Here and 
connect with the air pump. <laughs> open, open that valve and the air go in and the lungs becomes like a balloon. <coughs> like a balloon, you know, very big one. And then, then open and the air, and it's lower down. <laughs> it's very interesting. I feel like it's happening inside my body. It's Günther Hagen. You watch... No, no, it's a Nyama uh, navigation okay. teacher. Okay. Did you say Gemma has a whole folder of disgusting images of injuries? <laughs> I have that one, yeah. You have it now? Yes. Yeah. So, I can give you a no. few <laughs> 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 They leave a man, dead man, and a camera on for 52 days continuous. How it's changing. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it's interesting. When he died, then 52 days? Yeah, they leave the body on the ground and the camera is pointing, never move, and record it for 52 days continuous. And it changes. Is this time lapse? Yeah. In 30 degrees weather. I think it was a big body one, the, the tall one. I think a German. Why did that Dutch person? <laughs> okay. 52 days. And I was watching it. And uh, it's rotten because of the flies. Mm-hmm. The flies go in and then they, they lay the eggs. It's it become it's become swollen and then later on it's 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 gradually going down and then then the skeleton starts and the 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 skin is no more and then skeleton appears. I saw it with the buffalo, not with the human, but with the buffalo that disappeared. Mind is not much 
not much creating. <laughs> it's no trouble with that. So it's, it's that greed is not blindly appear because of your creation. If you create, it will appear. If you do not create, it will. Your mind is still just seeing only. <laughs> Now I'm no, not creating. That's why I'm unstuck understanding how the minds work. Like uh, no more eating dinner for a long time, and the mind is not hungry for it. It's no problem, no problem at all. No hungriness come up. And if someone eating in front of my eye. The dinner, no problem at all. No <laughs> <laughs> If I do like, yeah, yeah, like one one meal is actually enough for the life. But I still cannot do it. I have no willingness to do it yet. If you go to Sakai Kitaya, one meal is enough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's yeah, like, it's like a mountain of food. <laughs> sitting meditation sessions, did you get the mosquito bites? Mm. I got lots of mosquito bites on this <laughs> morning <laughs> session. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a lot. But you were sitting in the chair. Yeah. And with everyone else, or at least the monks, they can cover their legs with their rope. You know? uh, yeah. And your legs are and the itchiness is so noticeable, but my, I, I found my mind, it was not panic, so not rushing to uh, end for the ending times. Just awareness on the itchiness, but not panically aware, calmly aware, let it itchy. Do you let the mosquitoes bite you? Like if you see a mosquito, you're not meditating, you see it landing, will you blow it away or will you let it bite If you? I'm not meditating, maybe I will gently remove or even like uh, in a ch- monk's chanting sessions, I got that instant bite. Uh-huh. And it was not like mosquito bite, it was, it was quite painful, it's noticeable. <coughs> And I feel like it's not more. It's not quite painful. And then I even open my eye and I look and I saw that big black one biting me and I remove. My I was meditating and I remove. Uh, even there's a little amount of blood come out from this area. And I'm still itchy here. It was how many days ago? Three, four days ago. And then you just went back to meditation. Yeah. See what you need. (laughs) 
That's your karma? Yeah. You can test it your mindfulness. <laughs> Maybe you were fucked in the past life, eating things like <laughs> Is one of my karma. Uh, I cannot have a nap in the, in the daytime. Right? Whenever I have a nap, my phone always rings and wakes me up. Why don't you turn off your phone? Hmm? <laughs> He's a sailor. That's easy to do. If I am a sailor, I just turn off my phone. Well, I, I, I'm not uh, taking a nap every day, sometimes, some of the days, but at some of the days, always the phone ring and I, it makes me wake up. Yes, I always really, really notice it. Mm-hmm. I was very angry <laughs> last time, very angry. But now I use that as my meditation object. Oh, so I let it rain or you don't understand? Of course, I, I answer. You should be thankful because you, you know you want to follow your body's laziness, but the phone is making you stay awake to meditate. <coughs> but in the daytime, I cannot sleep long time. Yes. 15 minutes, 20 minutes will really be maximum. No, two and a half hours. I think today I said two hours. What? How many times you took that in front of me to wake me up? Five times. Five times? Okay. <laughs> the bell was ringing. Yeah. And, and I heard it coming closer, closer, closer. <laughs> no, and then I opened my eyes and I see it. <laughs> What's the clapping meditation? <laughs> It's that function. But I feel like I only spend four minutes. Yes. And then it's funny. I just listen to something. I put on the thing and I listen maybe for ten seconds and it was no dream, no anything. I just go until. This <laughs> <laughs> yeah. session is like thirty or nine. You're too sleepy already. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I was thinking of getting into the bed. Turning on the pizza. We're talking about sleep, and I think. Yeah. yeah, talking about sleep. Um, uh, we had some tea the other day, uh, some herbal tea, and then I went to sleep. And something happened that something happened for many, many years. I had a nightmare. And I felt stressed and I felt fear and I was running, trying to escape and crazy things happened uh, and I, I was in this dream and somehow I recognized, oh I was running, oh my crazy dream, fear, I have to go into this fear, I really like to feel this fear, <laughs> I said to myself in a dream. So I really meditated about the dream, about the fear and the dream. But I think uh, the tea maybe activated some something, uh, uh, cleaning effect, maybe the organs got overworked, you know, stress the body, and it affects the mind. Yeah, I didn't have any. Maybe we should try it again. <laughs> 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 <laughs>